This is our second lecture on mammography. After today's lecture, students will know about the operation of an AEC system and also learn about different acquisitions like digital breast tomosynthesis, contrast-enhanced spectral mammography, and stereotactic systems. Students will learn about a few artifacts and how to correct them. Students will learn how to calculate average glandular dose. Students will know the viewing conditions for mammograms. Students will know the qualification of personnel, quality control of mammography systems, and accreditation by the ACR and MQSA certification. Control of mammography exposures can be done in several ways. Control could be done manually or with an automatic exposure compensation system called AEC. For digital systems, the user sets a signal to noise ratio level. When the imaging system is activated, the AEC terminates exposure when the preset signal level is reached. AEC in mammography has similar features to general radiography. Both systems have photosensors and density control stages. One difference is that the AEC sensor in mammography is placed below the image receptor to avoid sensor artifacts in the image. In a general radiographic system, the AEC sensor is between the grid and image receptor. In digital detectors based on TFTs, the entire detector can act as a sensor for AEC. This figure shows the various parts of the AEC system. An AEC system uses several inputs from a pre-exposure to determine the radiographic techniques that will be used for imaging. These inputs include the compressed breast thickness, phototimer adjustments on the console, tube and target selection, and KV selected to achieve the desired optical density or signal-to-noise ratio. An operator will have several options for the AEC. These options include a fully automatic mode that sets both KV and target and filter combination. A second option is an automatic KV acquisition based again on a pre-exposure. A third option is an automatic time of exposure method using manually set target and filter combination and KV values. For most patient imaging, the fully automatic mode is used. Density control settings are also available for the operator. Density control steps provide a 10 to 15% increase or decrease in density from the baseline zero density setting for each step selected. A backup timer can terminate the exposure in situations where there is a malfunction in the AEC system. Let's look at different acquisition systems, starting with digital breast tomosynthesis on this slide. Because we now have detectors based on TFT arrays, it is possible to acquire and display digital tomosynthesis images of the breast. The process involves the acquisition of several sequential images at different angles as this figure shows. Depending on the manufacturer, 15 projection images can be acquired, from which 1 mm focal plane tomograms are reconstructed. The dose for the tomosynthesis process is like the dose for a single view mammogram. Tomograms are reconstructed typically by filtered back projection, but there are other methods available. Tomograms of the breast are shown at the bottom of this figure. Another acquisition system is contrast enhanced spectral mammography. Contrast enhanced spectral mammography is a dual energy subtraction technique that uses two acquisitions, a low energy and a high energy acquisition. The low energy acquisition is similar to 2D digital mammography, while the high energy image is a post contrast enhanced mammogram utilizing the K edge effect of iodine. The picture shows two images A is a digital mammogram, while C is a contrast enhanced spectral mammogram. The listed references show that, as compared with traditional 2D digital mammography, application of contrast-enhanced spectral mammography significantly increased accuracy and sensitivity for breast cancer detection in women with dense breasts. Additional benefits of contrast-enhanced spectral mammography over full-field digital mammography is a decrease in the false positive rate, high specificity, and an improvement in tumor size estimation. You can read more about this in the articles shown here. When comparing the diagnostic value of contrast-enhanced spectral mammography with MRI, here is a study that concludes that contrast-enhanced spectral mammography shows higher specificity and positive predictive value than MRI. The article title is shown here so you can find out more information. Additional related articles are also shown. The next acquisition system is a stereotactic system. Stereotactic breast biopsy systems allow for three-dimensional localization and sampling of breast lesions by using targeted biopsy instruments. In general, they are used for targeting microcalcifications associated with lesions. 
Figure A above shows a prone system. In prone systems, the patient lies on a table with the breast hanging down and opening. The breast is compressed and imaged at multiple angles. A computer is used to determine lesion depth and to control needle orientation for biopsy. Image receptors for prone systems are CCD cameras coupled to X-ray phosphor screens of 5 cm by 5 cm field of view. Digital add-on units with larger field of views can be attached to standard mammography units as an alternative to the prone system shown here. Let's now look at some mammography artifacts. This particular artifact demonstrates the importance of collimator alignment. The solid white line in the image is due to collimator misalignment with the detector. This is corrected by realignment of the collimator with the detector. There are two artifacts shown here. The first is motion-related and the second is due to antiperspirant. Motion-related artifacts are reduced by using the compression paddle to immobilize the breast. In the top left image, calcifications are blurred and the breast seems to be dense, indicating motion in the image. The corrected image to the top right shows the calcifications clearly. The bottom image shows objects that look like microcalcifications. This is related to antiperspirants the patient wore before imaging. Women are reminded not to wear antiperspirants and skin creams before imaging because this can appear in the image as unusual lesions or microcalcifications. Here are several more artifacts. The bottom right image shows a horizontal line artifact. This artifact may be attributed to a line of defective pixels. It is corrected by recalibrating the detector by imaging a uniform plexiglass phantom. A ghosting artifact occurs when a latent image from a previous mammogram is superimposed on a current image. This is corrected by recalibration of the digital detector to remove the ghost image. Figure A is a mammogram with a ghost image and B is the mammogram without the ghost. A gouging artifact is also shown at the top right image. You can find more artifacts in these two articles shown here. You can find more contrast enhanced spectral mammography artifacts in this article. Because mammography requires the use of ionizing radiation, the risk of carcinogenesis from radiation dose to the breast is of concern. This is important for screening mammography because of the large number of women receiving screening exams. Optimization of breast dose is important and is monitored yearly as required by MQSA regulations. The average glandular dose D subscript G is currently the preferred dose index used because glandular tissue is often the site of carcinogenesis. The formula for average glandular dose is shown on this slide. XESAC is the entrance skin air camera in milligree and D subscript GN is a conversion factor that depends on KV and high value layer of the machine used for imaging. The unit of D subscript GN is milligray dose per milligray incident air camera. We will see an example of how to use the average glandular dose formula on the next slide. The plots shown here describe the relationship between average glandular dose for 50% adipose, 50% glandular breast, and various tissue thicknesses using an AEC system. The 4.5 cm ACR breast phantom is shown as the vertical line in the plot. You can see that a screen film system has the highest average glandular dose at the largest breast thicknesses. The current rule says average glandular dose must not exceed 3 mg per exposure for any of the conventional tomosynthesis or combination modes available on mammography systems. An example calculation for average glandular dose is shown in bold text. Note that this conversion factor table is for moly moly target filter combination. For other target filter combinations, a different table will be used. Conversion factors D subset GN increase with higher beam energies and decrease with increase in breast thickness for constant beam quality and breast composition. In mammography, technique charts can be used to help determine the appropriate KV and target filter combinations for imaging based on breast thickness and compositions. Most techniques use AEC and exposure times from 0.5 seconds to 2 seconds to achieve optical densities of 1.5 to 2 for screen film systems or some preset signal to noise ratio for digital detection systems. Table 8.4 above shows various KVs for different breast thicknesses and compositions for a screen film system using a molly molly target filter combination. Table 8.5 shows the various KV values available for a selenium digital mammography system. Here are some factors affecting breast dose. 
Screen film speed is an important factor because it relates to film optical density. Faster films require less exposure to reach the desired optical density. For digital detectors, speed is not an issue because of wide latitude and wide dynamic range. Signal to noise ratio is the key factor for image quality in digital detectors. Breast thickness and composition also affects those as the table shows. Higher KV and higher beam qualities reduce those but at the expense of lower subject contrast leading to lower image quality. Anti-scatter grids improve subject contrast and radiographic contrast but increase those by the magnitude of the Bucky factor or the magnitude of the increase in digital technique needed for a given signal to noise ratio. Table 8.8 lists measured average glandular dose for a screen film system with a film optical density of 1.8 and a molly molly target filter combination. For the comparison to digital detectors, the KV on the table 8.5 on the previous slide is used for this table. A tungsten rhodium target filter is used for breast thicknesses of 2, 4, and 6 cm, and tungsten silver is used for breast thicknesses of 8 cm. This table also shows that when compared to screen film systems, the digital detection system reduces dose to the patients for the two types of breast shown, 100% adipose and 50% adipose and 50% glandular breasts. Risks associated with mammography examinations can be approached from both a patient and staff perspective. From the patient's perspective, the risk of radiation-induced breast cancer in a population of 1 million women each of who receive a screening mammogram at age 40 is about 30 new cases. So the benefits outweigh the risk when it comes to screening. In terms of risks to the staff, technologies can stand behind a shield for exposures and receive so low an exposure that radiation monitoring is not a regulatory requirement. Another consideration for patients is thyroid shielding. Thyroid shields are not required because it could get in the way and lead to repeat exposures. In terms of protecting the public from scatter radiation, wall shielding is not required for mammography rooms because of the low X-ray energies and low scatter radiation involved. Screening pregnant women is also allowed. There are some requirements on the types of viewing equipment that can be used for digital mammography. It is recommended that monitors used for diagnostic interpretation of digital mammograms be FDA approved and must be calibrated and have at least 5 million pixels. The ACR adds a requirement for maximal luminance of at least 450 candela per square meter. A typical workstation must include two large format LCD monitors with at least 2560 by 2048 pixels, a pixel pitch of 0.165 millimeters, and a contrast ratio of at least 350 to 1. Monitors are viewed at an optimal distance of 50 centimeters. All monitors must be calibrated to meet DICOM GSDF standards. If film is to be printed, the film printers should be FDA approved laser printers. On this slide, we can compare viewing mammograms on a conventional workstation versus viewing on a PAX archive. I will paraphrase a 2010 study that found the image quality for full field digital mammograms on workstations was significantly better than that for mammograms on a PAX monitor. When viewing digital breast tomosynthesis images, in the absence of a conventional viewing workstation, a PAC system can be used for viewing and interpretation. Research from 2017 from the British Journal of Radiology shows that for interpretation of digital breast tomosynthesis, there is comparable performance between a conventional viewing workstation and a PAC system. Let's now turn our attention to quality control. This slide lists the various tested mammography technologies that is required to perform daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and semi-annually. The daily processor test and any test related to film are not as relevant these days because a lot of MAMO sites no longer use screen film. All other tests listed on this slide are relevant to digital mammography systems and are performed by technologies according to the timelines listed. The technologies QC is reviewed annually by the medical physicists during annual equipment tests. Medical physics equipment tests are shown on this slide. The medical physicist is responsible for equipment performance measurements before first clinical use and annually thereafter. Tests must also be performed following major repairs and before clinical use. The physicist also performs oversight of the QC program performed by the technologist. The table lists various physics tests as well as corrective action timelines. Although the table mentions screen film, some of the same tests are also performed for digital detection systems. 
Several tests show a 30-day timeline for correction and some show immediate correction before clinical use. This is the same for digital detection systems as well. Digital mammography equipment manufacturers have set both qualitative and quantitative image quality guidelines for acceptable performance of their imaging equipment. Qualitative criteria are different for direct versus indirect digital equipment manufacturers. Criteria are based on viewing objects in a phantom. The phantom is shown on this slide with the locations of the various objects to be viewed. The objects are shown as fibers, spec groups, and masses. In general, direct detector flat panel manufacturers, for example, require visibility of five fibers, four spec groups, and four masses, whereas indirect detector flat panel and cassette-based CR detector manufacturers require visibility of four fibers, three spec groups, and three masses. Quantitative evaluation includes the evaluation of the signal under the added acrylic disc and in a background area using ROIs of a specified size. This allows automatic calculation for signal-to-noise ratio and contrast-to-noise ratio. If the signal-to-noise ratio and contrast-to-noise ratio are outside acceptable range, the system may not be used for clinical imaging until it is corrected. Mammography is a team effort that involves the participation of mammography technologists, radiologists, and medical physicists. This is true from the imaging side and the quality assurance side. Ultimate responsibility for a mammography quality assurance rests with the radiologist in charge of the mammography practice. The lead radiologist must ensure that all radiologists, mammography technologists, and the medical physicists meet the initial qualifications and maintain the continuing education and experience required by MQSA regulations. Minimum physicist credentials for mammography equipment evaluations are listed here. A physicist must be state licensed, approved, or have ABR certification. A physicist must have a master's degree or higher with at least 20 hours of physics. Physicists must have 20 contact hours specialized training in mammography and must have experience conducting 10 unit evaluations and at least one facility evaluation. Eight hours of training in each new modality is required. Physicists must have 15 CEUs over three years and must test six MAMO units in two facilities over a period of two years. A mammography technologist must have initial qualification from the ARRT as a radiography and mammography tech. They must have 24 credits of continuing education every two years and must meet continuing qualification requirements every 10 years. Radiologists must have 60 CEUs of initial qualifications in mammography and 15 CEUs of continuing education over three years. Because of MQSA requirements, record keeping is very important. Records must be maintained of employee qualifications, quality assurance, and physicist tests. Clinical performance and quality control issues should be reviewed periodically with the entire mammography staff. Under MQSA rules, a facility can perform mammography legally if it is accredited and certified by the FDA. Accreditation must be from an accrediting body like the ACR or from a state accrediting body if the facility is in such a state. The accrediting body verifies that the facility has met the MQSA standards of safe, reliable, high quality, and accurate mammography. This includes the initial qualifications and continuing experience and education of interpreting radiologists, technologists, and physicists involved in the mammography program. The accrediting body also verifies the existence of an active QC program with verified and validated image quality standards. Once a facility is accredited by the ACR, it can receive certification. Certification is the approval of a facility by the US FDA to provide mammography services. Requirements for initial accreditation and certification includes acquiring and submitting both clinical images and phantom images for evaluation by the ACR or other accrediting body. Both portions also include collection and submission of technique factors and dose information. The phantom imaging portion uses a breast phantom designed to simulate a 50% glandular and 50% adipose breast and an average compressed breast thickness of 4.5 cm. Passing criteria for ACR depends on if screen film or digital detection is used. To pass the MQSA image quality standards, screen film mammography, indirect digital detector-based systems, and cassette-based CR systems must be able to visualize at least four fibers, three calcification groups, and three masses with no obvious artifacts at an average glandular dose of less than 3 mg. 
For direct digital detectors, the image quality requirement is to be able to visualize five fibers, four calcification groups, and four masses at a dose of less than 3 mg to the phantom. Let's finish up with a few questions. First question. In terms of the visualization of objects in the ACR breast phantom, digital detector manufacturers require which of the following? A. Five calcification groups, four fibers, and four masses. B. Five fibers, four calcification groups, and four masses. C. Four fibers, three calcification groups, and three masses. D. Five masses, four fibers, and four calcification groups. The correct choice is B. Five fibers, four calcification groups, and four masses. Next question. When viewing mammography images, a typical workstation must have all of these except, and your choices are A, two large format LCD monitors, B, 2560 by 2048 pixels, C, pixel pitch of 0.165 millimeters, D, contrast ratio less than 350 to 1. The correct choice is D, contrast ratio less than 350 to 1 is not correct for a mammography monitor. Next question. Concerning risks of mammography imaging, which of these statements is not true? Your choices are A. Radiation monitoring is not a regulatory requirement for technologists. B. Thyroid shields are not required for imaging patients. C. Imaging rooms should have 1.6 mm leaded walls to protect the public from scatter radiation. D. Pregnant women can be screened. The correct choice is C. C is not a true statement. This is the last slide. Thank you for watching this presentation.